Hey guys, welcome into Fantasy Football Academy 2020. I'm your Dean from Paris, France. No, just kidding. That's just a picture from my wedding. Um, so hey guys, what a weekend. What a weekend. What a Monday night. What a Thursday night. We Look, we should have known with the Thursday matchup that this week was going to be crazy. And it did not disappoint. Well, I'm not going to say it didn't disappoint, but there was no lack of adrenaline running through your veins. If you were a fantasy football player, or manager, owner this week. So we have a laundry list, literally a laundry list of injuries to get to. So we're going to kick it off with the sad news. And then we're going to pick it up a little bit with the breakdown of this week's matchups of the week for our fan, our league of record here at fantasy football academy 2020 uh with the academy grads we've got a new episode uh dropping a little later today uh, i'm going to try to get it out for my waiver wire pickups um because the injury list is just so long and you guys are going to be hurting for replacements uh some of you like me who have Saquon Barkley, your number one overall, he's gone for the year. Yes, that is to, top, to start off our week of injury or our weekend of injuries. Saquon Barkley, ACL, Terry's out for the year. Now, look, a lot of people are going to be going out and they're going to be putting in waiver wire claims for Deion Lewis. Now, look, hold on a second. Pump the brakes on the Deion Lewis thing because rumor is is that Devontae Freeman is coming into town on Tuesday, uh, today. Um, right now it is 6.30 in the morning, so your waiver wire pickups have not even started yet. Um, you, some of you, you can't put in waiver wires until you guys unlock on some platforms. On other platforms, they won't process until Wednesday. Uh, some of you, most of you have a waiver wire order where it rotates. Uh, so check your waiver wire order, see who's ahead of you, where you rank in the overall waiver wire order claim and on your uh, platform that you're using. We here at Fantasy Football Academy, um, we use the NFL Fantasy app and I have it to where there is no waiting period for waiver wire claims, it's first come first serve. And I do that for a very simple reason that it's really fun to who see who's getting up early to make those claims, to make themselves better. And who's just going absolutely nuts, dropping people that they probably should have hung on to for the darling of the week. Last week, it was Scotty Miller. I told you guys on this show, that Scotty Miller was going to be flying off the waiver wire, but I was hands off. Look, I was hands off for a reason. Uh, he did not perform this week. Uh, he actually dropped the touchdown pass. If he hadn't dropped the touchdown pass, he would have been fine. You would have been okay taking Scotty Miller. Uh, but Mike Evans just balled out because Chris Godwin was not there. So, uh I'm not going to make apologies for uh, for Mike Evans just yet because I was hard on the uh, the entire Tampa Bay offense this off season uh, prior there this draft season prior to the start of this season, but uh, two weeks is not going to sway me one way or the other, uh, especially since he had a very down injury riddled week one. Uh, he came back week two with a strong showing, but it was minus Chris Godwin. And the whole premise of the Tampa Bay offense was that you had 2,000 yard receivers. And I kept telling everybody that Jameis Winston wasn't there. It was Tom Brady. But if you didn't listen, sorry. Um, so here we go. Uh, Julio Jones. Hamstring injury, he is questionable. Now, look, a lot of these that I'm going to be running through, uh, these are guys that you're going to have to monitor on the practice uh, injury reports as it comes out through the week. Unless you are on the Thursday night game, which, if I'm not mistaken, is Miami and Jacksonville. 
this week, uh, two juggernauts. Um, so that should be interesting. Now, Jacksonville is a little better than what was advertised. Uh, I don't think Gardner Minshew got the memo that they were supposed to be tanking for Trevor Lawrence. So he's actually being a decent fantasy quarterback. He's a number one on the waiver wire for uh, performance. And if you have a running back need, James Robinson is a name to, to remember to try to pick up. So get your waiver wire claim in there. There's a little teaser for the waiver wire edition. It's going to be coming out later today. Uh, yes, two episodes, one day, just for you guys. So Julio, he's got a hamstring. He's questionable. Look, I had Julio and uh, Devontae Adams. Same league in my other league, and uh, I was not happy. Uh, I did, however, pull out the win. I ha however, I on my league of record, I did lose to the misses. So, honey, congratulations. Love you. Uh, Devontae Adams also out um, with hamstring. Uh, is it a hamstring or a – tell you what, let's, uh, let's share – the uh, share my screen real quick and we'll get we'll take a look at this real quick oh we're rolling not that one either i got way too many too much stuff pulled up here guys sorry hang on just a second there we go game center Okay, so here we go. Uh, injury report. All right, guys. Let's check out the injury report real quick. You guys see my players there. Uh, so Julio is questionable. Let's get to the Packers. Real quick, and we'll run down this. There we go. So, Devontae Adams. My boy Charles has him in this league. Uh, yes, hamstring. Uh, he did, tr it seems like he did try to push, but because of the incredible performance by a. a Ron and not the A.A. Ron that plays quarterback, the A.A. Ron that plays running back. Uh, 49 points put up by Aaron Jones, 168 yards on the ground, some more through the air. Just he went nuts. Somebody gave this man, I don't know, gave him a rain or something, and he just reigned supreme over the field. So, hashtag not a sponsor, but if you're watching, I'll take sponsorships, guys. I work for Rain. So, Devontae Adams, he's going to be questionable. Could have made it back, according to reports, uh, if the Packers had needed him. Thankfully, if you were an owner of Devontae Adams and you were lucky enough to come out of this with a win, bless yourself, consider yourself lucky, uh, because if he had have pushed himself and had have aggravated this injury more, he would have been lost possibly for this week, possibly for two weeks. So we see Julio, if you watched the, the Atlanta game with Cowboys, and if you did, I'm sorry if you're not anyone but a Cowboy fan because the Falcons should have won this game. Quick uh, stat, since 1933, and they showed this stat during the game, no team had lost by when scoring 39 or more points and having zero turnovers since 1933. They were 440 and 0. So congratulations to the Atlanta Falcons for breaking the streak because they couldn't fall on a side, on an onside kick. So. Yes, I was yelling at this game. Yes, I was upset, and I could not believe my eyes because next week the Cowboys get the Seahawks. They could have started 0-3. Uh, my beloved Washington team fell to the extremely talented Arizona Cardinals. So, Arizona, congratulations. Good work. 
and Kyler Murray and company just balled out against my boys. So, Devontae Adams, we're going to keep an eye on him and see how he comes through the week. CMC, if you were in the top two uh, draft picks this year, you were upset, to say the least. CMC out four to six weeks with a high ankle sprain. Um, if you need help, if you need a replacement for CMC and you're looking still at the Panthers, Mike Davis is the name to be claiming off a of waiver wire this week. Um, I don't know how much he's going to be used. And my bet would be that uh, Teddy Bridgewater actually gets a boost because of this injury, not Mike Davis. Mike Davis might be used in a uh, more traditional capacity, but any, uh, any top receiver from Carolina, Teddy Bridgewater, if you need a streaming option, uh, depend upon matchup. So keep an eye on that for the next four to six weeks. Um, Drew Locke, uh, mentioning this simply because of Noah Fant, because Cortland Sutton also is out. Uh, he has a ACL and an MCL tear in his left knee. Uh, Drew Locke has a rotational and labral injury to his right shoulder. He's gone for two weeks. Uh, but Jeff Driscoll looked good. So as far as passing goes for De uh, Denver, I don't really see that much of a, uh, of a decline. It might actually be an improvement. Who knows? Uh, Philip Lindsay has a sprained toe. And I know some of you out there are going, sprained toe, Dean, come on, sprained toe. Well, look, you try being a running back and making a living on your feet and pushing off and cutting, sprained toe is going to hurt. So he's gone for two to two to four weeks. This gives a boost to all Melvin Gordon owners. If you own Melvin Gordon, please start him. I know I cautioned against it, but this is the thing about fantasy football is that you have to be willing to change your point of view once the season starts and see how things are really playing out. Um, the reports that he was having trouble dealing with the altitude. Remember, they play half their games away and half their games at home. So it, he just needs one or two good home games, and he's fine. Um, so Devontae Adams, the hamstring, as I said, is not serious. Uh, so keep an eye on that through the week. A.J. Brown listed as questionable. This is something to also keep in mind. Uh, keep an eye on if you're an A.J. Brown owner, if you're a Ryan Tannehill owner, if you're trying to stream Tannehill, um, if you're a uh, John U. Smith for the tight end owner, uh, this is also something to pay attention to because you might be getting a boost if A.J. is gone again. Uh, and we're going to break down a little more in our uh, waiver wire pickup of the week uh, episode when we put that out. Paris Campbell, MCL and PCL. There is no timetable for Paris Campbell at this moment. Uh, that, of course, can change during the week. So keep an eye on that. This gives a boost to T.Y. Hilton. And I know T.Y. is the one that is usually dealing with the injuries, with the hamstring, soft, you know, soft tissue uh, injuries, groin, hamstring, anything with the lower body. Uh, that's usually T.Y., but Today is Paris Campbell. DJ Shark, my boy on league record, uh, he has a chest injury. Uh, he also has an early game, and he was limited in practice. Now, look, for a receiver to have – for anybody, really, to have a chest injury, but especially a receiver if he's, you know, going over the middle, if he's going down the field and he has to lay out for a ball, He's probably not going to do that because it's going to hurt. So if he has a chest injury and he has a, the Thursday night game, if you have the ability to pivot away from DJ Shark, please pivot away from DJ Shark. Um, and I'm speaking to myself here, so I have options. I'll show you guys in a minute. Uh, Malcolm Brown, fractured pinky. I don't know what to tell you about a fractured pinky. Okay, I know David Johnson had a uh, 
had a wrist injury a few a couple of years back. I believe it was uh, 2018, if I'm not mistaken, was the injury that he was dealing with. Uh, so, I, I mean, I understand the wrist injury. Fractured pinky. Malcolm, come on now. Uh, now, in related news with Malcolm Brown, Daryl Henderson looks like he is the man to have in this backfield this week. Last week, it was Malcolm Brown. Uh, week Starting week one, I told everybody it was Cam Akers. Cam Akers is the next on our uh, injury list with a rib injury. It seems like he has separated some cartilage. Uh, in the rib area, which sounds like it hurts a lot. I myself don't know about that, but uh, it just sounds painful. Uh, so Cam Akers, this is, uh, if you have him, until he proves otherwise and he proves that I'm right and that he was a rookie of the year material, uh, please pivot away from him. Uh, also, keep an eye on Malcolm, Malcolm Brown with the fractured pinky and being a running back and having to hold on to the ball, that's probably not a good injury to have. And if Daryl Henderson is available on your waiver wire, go pick him up. Uh, we're going to see when I do the breakdown of our league that Daryl Henderson was actually on someone's roster. However, he was on his bench, and it cost him. So, um, But we have, we have two new uh, features that are coming this week. We're going to have the – Dunce of the week coming up and moving to the head of the class award. So I'm very proud of the recipient for the first ever head of the class award. And uh, we're going to maybe leave it up to a vote because I got a couple of nominees for Dunce of the week. So um, Devontae Parker moving on to the, the, the other team with the early games Uh with the Dolphins, he has a hamstring injury and his he has a short week. So that's going to be something to keep an eye on for today's practice, for Wednesday's practice, and going into Thursday night's game to see where Devontae Parker ends up at. Uh, Sterling Shepard is suffering from turf toe. So what does this mean? Well, one, Daniel Jones isn't as good as advertised, say, on Barkley is out. So they're going to focus on the run, on the run game uh, as a defense. So they're going to probably, well, I'm sorry, they're going to probably focus on the passing game, making the run game kind of secondary in their, uh, their focus for as far as the defense goes. But this uh, definitely – if you are a Giants owner of any fantasy giant, you have to pay attention to this week and see who they bring in. Uh, if they stick with Deion Lewis, Deion Lewis was serviceable, but he's no Saquon. And Devontae Freeman wasn't that good with the team that he was used to, the, uh, the system. He was good at one point in time in that system. Uh, and he's gotten older. So if he signs with the Giants, he's going to get paid. Uh, he will be the guy in uh, with Big Blue. So something to keep an eye on. Uh, also, if you have Darius Slayton, Darius Slayton now becomes the number one receiver with this uh, Sterling Shepard injury. Uh, there were the three in, in, uh, with Big Blue. But I think pretty much uh, Slayton's kind of carved his niche out as the number one receiver for New York. Uh, Tyrod Taylor, chest injury. This was an early injury. A lot of analysts are thinking that this was a injury in order to get uh, Justin Herbert in and get him started on his career with the Chargers. So he was good. He was serviceable. And if you are an owner of Austin Eckler, uh, this is Definitely a good thing for you. Uh, this is also a good thing for Keenan Allen because Justin Herbert is just seems like a better quarterback than Tyrod Taylor. So time will tell. Uh, we'll see what happens. Now, for the San Francisco 49ers, if you are a Niners fan, Professor Chet, my condolences. Congratulations on the win, and I'm sorry for all the losses that you took during such win. Jimmy G, ankle injury. Tevin Coleman, knee injury. Raheem Mostert, 
knee injury. You also dealing with George Kittle possibly still out. Um, Nick Bosa on the defensive side of the ball gone. If you guys could see the injury report just for the San Francisco 49ers, it's enough to make you cry. So um, I, I don't think I've ever seen a sadder win uh, <laughs> as far as fantasy football goes. Because uh, if you lost Raheem Moster, you were extremely happy that he ripped off an 80-yard run of first play from scrimmage. And then nothing else happened <laughs> because he got hurt. Um, I wound up with – I have him on my roster for League of Record. I also have him on my other league. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get 21 points out of him before he went down. Tevin Coleman also down. Um, so this leaves their third option, and we'll get into that in just a second as we see – or actually, we'll get into it on our waiver wire pickup uh, because that's going to be one of our waiver wire pickups of the week. Uh, speaking of waiver wire pickups of the week, if you remember back to last week on my episode, uh, I told you to sit Cam Newton. Sorry. Um, now, one of our league members has Deshaun Watson, who was also a set of the week, and Cam Newton, who was also a set of the week. But given the two options, I definitely would have started Cam Newton over uh, Deshaun Watson. So, uh, But for my other picks of the week, uh, if you'll remember, I did say that Joe Burrow was going to be a start of the week. Paid off. Uh, a couple of my other starts of the week also panned out. So feeling pretty good. Uh, and let, we're going to go ahead and get into the breakdown for League of Record. So let's check this out. Uh, Game Center, welcome in to the, un, the uh, Academy Grads Fantasy Football League. This was my matchup against my wife. 132, 124. We're going to go to the box score. Check this out and see what's going on. Uh, did have Lamar, did have uh, Raheem. Uh, Barkley, I lost early in the game. So I uh, got him, got 2.8 points out of him. The, uh, the surprise for the, for this matchup was actually on the bench with Darren Waller. Uh, Waller put up 29 points against the Saints. I was absolutely shocked. I thought that the shock of the week was going to be Hayden Hurst putting up 19. Uh, that was just crazy. Um, Metcalf came in, came through for a big uh, 92 yards and a touchdown. Um, and then we have uh, – Kelsey, of course, did his thing, 90 yards and a touchdown for him. Now, she did have Mahomes at 31.48, but she had Matt Ryan at 36.52. Now, if this had been anyone else, I would have started Matt Ryan. But with having Mahomes starting, you can't really sit Mahomes. Now, you have to play matchup, and it was either Dallas or the Chargers. So, I'm taking the Chargers. Now, Dallas did have a decimated defense. Moving forward, if you are going up against the Dallas defense, I would definitely uh, start anyone you have. So, if you have a Seattle Seahawk this coming week, going up against the Dallas defense that has been decimated by uh, injuries, that is definitely a good play to have. Uh, now, you see on my bench down here, I did leave uh, quite a few points. Terry McLaurin, my boy, uh, Kareem Hunt, I had sat in this league. And Big Ben slightly outperforming Lamar Jackson. But again, there's no way that you can sit Lamar over Big Ben. 
So we're going to go to the game of the week and the proud recipient of the very first ever moving to the head of the class award, my boy, you know him, you love him, you've seen him on this channel before, my boy, D Money Daniel has emerged victorious after sweating out a Monday night game, going up against Alvin Kamara, who just lost his mind and remembered who he was, putting up 38.79 rushing yards, 95 receiving yards, two touchdowns. So he he gave uh, my boy Charles a glimmer of hope, trying to sweat that game out. Did not happen. Um, now we see down here that he <laughs> Charles was unfortunate enough to uh, to have Devontae Adams and have him slide out, and then not only did he have Devontae Adams, but he had to go up against Aaron, Mr. Jones in Green Bay, putting up forty nine point six points. So. Welcome to the wild, wacky, wonderful world of fantasy football where you can put up 170 points and still lose. Uh, this is a, uh, an ironic twist because, well, not really a twist, but a, an ironic uh, storyline because last year, week one, when my son Colt was playing with us, he scored 210 points and faced Charles in week one, and Charles lost after scoring, I believe, 180 points. So, Charles, good job in keeping up the tradition. Uh, so, moral of that story is play Charles early in the year, you'll score a lot of points, and he will not, well, not score as many. But we're going to look down here. Look, Josh Allen, I don't know what's going on with him. He's absolutely losing his mind. He, he remembered that he's playing in the NFL, that he's actually an NFL quarterback, and he found his new favorite target in Stephon Diggs. I did not think, if you watch this show, that Stephon Diggs was going to be anything of note uh, this year with Josh Allen. I thought it was going to take them some time to get to know each other, but apparently they went out during quarantine or at least had a lot of Zoom meetings and uh, they got to know each other quite well because Josh Allen threw for 417 yards, four touchdowns, 18 yards rushing. So he actually learned how to use his arm in the off season. Uh, Zeke Elliott just did his thing. He did have that one fumble had 33 yards receiving, 89 yards rushing, and a TD. So that's, again, a nice little stat line for him. Uh, Marvin Jones, in the absence of Kenny Galladay, look, I don't really know what to make of Marvin Jones. If you have an ability to pivot away from him until Galladay gets back, please do so, because he does not look like he can survive without having Kenny Galladay there to take some of that pressure away. Calvin Ridley. Told you guys, I kept telling you, I kept telling you, I kept telling you. Apparently, Daniel was the only one listening. He not only drafted Calvin Ridley, but he stole him away from me in the draft. Uh, I was unable to hold on to get Ridley in our league of record, as you see. He had 109 yards receiving two TDs, uh, mirroring the hobbled Julio Jones, who was on my team in my other league. And I believe he was on Luke's team in this league. Eric Ebron. Look, Eric Ebron was the – him and Darius Slayton uh, were the low points for Daniel in this one. Uh, if you have an ability to go out and get yourself a different tight end, please do so. Keep your eye. Mo Ali Cox actually have a really good week. And if you really don't know who Mo Ali Cox is, two things. One, don't be ashamed because unless you listen to fantasy, the fantasy footballers, you will not know who Mo Ali Cox is. 
aka Gigantor, as uh, as nicknamed by the fantasy footballers. So uh, if you guys are listening, hey, what's happening? Love your show. Uh, I do recommend that you also make them a definite subscribe, like, and add down at the bottom, uh, as you do for this show. So appreciate you guys. Um, but, yeah, Eric Ebron is not what you thought he was going to be. Definitely not what I thought he was going to be because he is my tight end in my other league. Um, and I will be trying to acquire a different tight end this week. Derry Slayton. Look, it's the Giants, guys. Being the number one receiver on the Giants really doesn't mean a whole lot in fantasy. Uh, if you have the ability to pivot away from this, please do so. Um, here's the thing, though. The Eagles turned up negative one points in their loss to the Rams. So we could look down here, and we – don't see a whole lot on Daniel's side for the ability to pivot away. Uh, he had, he's still carrying carry on Johnson. Um, I would definitely try to maybe drop Philip Lindsay, Sammy Watkins. It, it, it's hard to drop any KC player. My advice is wait until he has that one blow up week. Look for somebody who needs receiver help and try to trade, okay, just to make yourself feel better. Uh, A.J. Brown, questionable. He's out. Uh, Phil Lindsay was uh, also on the sideline as doubtful. Uh, you're holding Alexander Madison, hoping that uh, Dalvin Cook goes down and that he'll be able to step in and take that full, full workload away uh, as he's on the bench. But there's not a whole lot of wiggle room that you could have put anyone else in. So Daniel gets my moving to the head of the class because his starting lineup was just as good as you could get for this week. Um, Charles, the only thing I could have told you was to start Tyler Boyd, but you couldn't start Tyler Boyd legitimately with any kind of good, warm, fuzzy feeling over Devontae Adams after the week one that he had. So I really can't tell you nothing. Just sorry, brother. So let's move up here. We're going to check out our next candidate for our next uh, award, which is the dunce of the week. For those of you who are either too young or too uninformed, to remember or understand a dunce used to was the bad kid in class the guy who was either the class clown the smart aleck or just didn't pay attention he'd sit in the corner with this little cone-shaped hat in the corner and other kids would make fun of him so with that said we're going to have three nominees for our dunce of the week we're going to look first at Mr. Dalton, the COVID-19ers. Like the COVID-19ers, apparently his team was as close to being in quarantine and away from everyone else as possible. Um, he did start Tyreek Hill, so we had a glimmer of hope there, along with uh, David Montgomery, thankful to a – uh, rushing touchdown Mark Ingram had. But this is the game where I said he had Deshaun Watson against Baltimore. Or, look down here, he had Cam Newton against Seattle. Now look, yes, Seattle had an absolutely phenomenal uh, player with uh, – Jamal Adams, but that's one player. The entire Baltimore defense was absolutely, is absolutely phenomenal. That's why they are my defense here on the fantasy footballers, or fantasy footballers, yeah, the fantasy footballers in my mind because I watched their episode just before this one. Uh, but on the Fantasy Football Academy 2020 League of Record, 
one moment I have an injury report from the missus coming in. So. Sorry guys, she's uh, apparently she injured herself at work. So um, I'll find out what that is. Nothing serious, just listed as a minor infraction. So uh, put it in football terms. But we see uh, Cam Newton here and given the choice, and guys, I, this is why I talk about environmental roster management. Here's your, your environment. Your environment is going up against Baltimore's defense who has just absolutely shut down everywhere, or you have Seattle who has one player and you know that you're able to throw, you're able to run, and it's Cam Newton. So Cam Newton, I'll, I'll take him over to Sean Watson in the system that he's being used in right now anyway. Looks like she smashed her finger. Update, injury update, guys. Ironic that it's coming on the injury episode. So we look down here. We also see Julian Edelman. Now, the guys, look, if you've got Cam Newton and you've got Julian Edelman, you're putting them together until they prove you otherwise, okay? Um, go up here. Why Kyle Rudolph is on his list, I don't know. Uh, A.J. Green, until A.J. proves something, I'm not putting him in. Uh, so here, I would definitely have had put in Cam and Julian Edelman. If you put those two in, let's do real quick math. A.J. was six points. Let's say uh, Deshaun was 17. That will put, let's say, 20. That's about 40 points right there, guys. So 40 points on your bench. Uh, that's enough to actually make it a game. And let's see if we can find one other. Basically, if he had any other tight end besides the one he has in. And, oh, and let's put in Daryl Henderson as a uh, – flex and put Edelman in place of cup. Okay. So Edelman in place of cup and AJ being replaced by Daryl Henderson, that right there, Dalton, that gives you the win and that's in your win, in your loss streak and puts you and Hunter at one and one. Mr. Hunter. Let's see how you did. So, Stefan Diggs, good start there. Russell Wilson, five TD passes. That's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, Sonny Michelle, look, guys, I would take Sonny Michelle, put him on the bench. You got Josh Kelly, so you can start him out there. Tom Brady, if you have somebody out there in your league who loves Tom Brady, look for a look for a trade, guys. If you need help, look for a trade. Uh, outside of that, I really don't see anybody on his bench that I would have uh, rather had. C.D. Lamb give him a good game, and D. Hob had a nice twenty. Nothing like he had last week. Last week he just lost his mind. Uh, this week is pretty much what you expect from D Hop. Uh, 68 yards receiving, one touchdown. So, this is my first nominee for Dunce of the Week. Second nominee, let's go with Mr. Luke going up against the Fighting Infernapes. 
the Alpha Chads Incorporated is our nominee for Dunce of the Week. And here's what we have to say about that. Let's go down here. Jimmy G, look, that was a tough break to lose Jimmy G. He was one of my starts of the week. Uh, he did have a really good plus matchup. You see he had 131 and two touchdown passes already before he left the game. Uh, that would have been absolutely phenomenal start. Uh, Julio played all game long with a hand, nag and hamstring injury. Greg Olson needs to go away from your roster completely. Please go look for a new tight end. Todd Gurley, look, I cautioned you guys against Todd Gurley early in the season. I told you don't rely on him. You didn't heed my warning that week one mirage uh, from Todd Gurley. Don't get excited about that because this is pretty much what you're expecting from Todd Gurley. You look at it, the Atlanta <clears throat> Falcons scored 39 points. And they had, oh, sorry, guys, the cat just scared the hell out of me. Um, have a cat and a dog. The dog's pretty much quiet. If you hear a little jingle bell, that's her collar. The cat, we took the jingle bell off because it's annoying. She just moves around way too much. Um, but yeah, Greg Olson needs to be away from your from your roster. And Todd Gurley, 39 points, and all you get is 61 yards rushing. There is no way that I'm relying on that. You go down here. He had Devontae Parker, even though Parker pulled up with, with an injury. DJ Moore in a loss. And only scoring 17 points, still had 121 yards receiving, gave him 21 points. Could have had that. Could have had the Jarek McKinnon. Now, Jarek McKinnon is going to be one of the waiver wire pickups of the week for the San Francisco 49ers because he is the third running back in that backfield. Moving forward, if you had Raheem Mostert, <laughs> if you had – um, Tevin Coleman, if you're holding on to either one of these guys, you've just been blessed. If you're holding Jerry McKinnon on your roster already, you've been blessed with a number one receiving or number one rushing option. So, Mr. Luke, please, if you're watching this, move him at least into your flex position because uh, Joe Mixon and Clyde Edwards Hilaire are definitely must starts every single week. You drafted Mixon early, you drafted him for a reason, and you got Clyde Edwards Hilaire early, you got him for a reason. So you're going to need some quarterback play. Uh, Carson Wentz is not going to cut it. You're definitely in the market for. One of my pickups of the week, you might want to go out and snag Gardner Minshew. Uh, he has a matchup against the Dolphins coming up, and that could bode well for you. And we see Will Lutz here with the six points. The Packers defense with 12. Tyler Lockett, the only saving grace in this entire lineup. And that is why, Mr. Luke, you are – the nominee for Dunce of the Week. My leading candidate, Mr. Nick. And you guys might say, yeah, but Dean, the other two, one barely scored over 100 points and the other one didn't even hit 90 points. But here's why Mr. Nick is my Dunce of the Week. We're going to look at his box score. <laughs> and he had... Joe Burrow, Nick Chubb, Odell Beckham for a total of 76 points after Thursday. And trust me when I tell you he was flying higher than Snoop Dogg on a Saturday night, okay? He was on cloud nine with no, nothing above him. That's how high he was after this performance from his team on Thursday night. Thought that he could not lose. However, 
Apparently, he neglected to look to the right of the screen and see who he was matched up against. He pissed off Aaron Rodgers going for 240 yards, two passing touchdowns, 12 yards rushing, 23.2 fantasy points. Also, Christian McCaffrey, even though he got injured, still finished with 59 rushing yards, two touchdowns, 29 receiving yards, 24 points total. Josh Jacobs in the win against New Orleans, 17 receiving yards, 88 rushing yards, no score, still gave him 13 points. Mr. Cooper finally coming up with a hundo for the receiving yards, gave him 17 points. Uh, Noah Fant showing up big. So uh, the Jeff Driscoll experiment in Denver might be very good for my boy, uh, Mr. Chris, with Noah Fant pickup. Also, Melvin Gordon chipping in with 70 yards rushing, 14 yards receiving, and a receiving touchdown, giving us 16 points. Zerline with 11. However, the reason that Mr. Nick is my dunce of the week. Yes, Joe Burrow was phenomenal. Yes, Nick Chubb was great. Yes, Odell Beckham finally showed up. However, if you look at the rest of his lineup, Adam Thielen, Marquise Hollywood Brown, Peyton Barber. Guys, I'm a Washington fan, and I wouldn't have started Peyton Barber, okay? Look down on his bench, and we see James Conner, Sitting there, <laughs> 21 points. Go up here, and we see if we give 21 points, that gives him 37. And we look at anything else, at least it would have made it a more competitive game. Let's see. And we, if we had applied McCall Hardman in, in place of Adam Thielen, you wouldn't have done that. But that's the win for Mr. Nick. Uh, he also receives the lead nomination for the Dunce of the Week because Le'Veon Bell is still on his roster and not on IR. Guys, this is what I'm talking about, about – Proper roster management. Look, go out. If you have a guy who is listed as IR, you're going to take that player and you're going to put him on your injured reserve list. In this league, we have three spots because of COVID. So move him to the IR spot. If you are happy with dropping him, by all means, go ahead. I will be dropping Saquon here shortly. Uh, because he's gone for the year, and I will need to replace a player. So, with that said, we have the number one, without a doubt, moving to the head of the class award for Mr. D Money, my boy Daniel, for the 177 points he put up against Charles uh, in the Slutty Mutts. So, Daniel, congratulations. Members, of the uh, Academy Grads Fantasy Football League and listeners to the Fantasy Football Academy 2020 channel here on YouTube. If you haven't already, subscribe, like, and share for me. Please leave your choice for Dunce of the Week. We have Luke, Nick, and Dalton as our nominees. I'm leaning strongly toward Nick, and we will let you know next week on who won for dunce of the week. So guys, we have the waiver wire pickup coming up that will be sponsored by Zia of Lafayette. If you haven't already, go down to Zia, say hi to Heath and Tucker and the guys down there and say hey to Leonard, uh, the general manager. So Leonard, hi, how you doing? Appreciate you, appreciate the support, guys. This has been Fantasy Football Academy 2020 with your injury and week two review. So we're going to get in next time to your waiver wire pickups. Please 
Make sure you're working that waiver wire properly. Remember to trust your gut. If you have a suggestion for a future show, please put it down at the bottom or any future awards. Please leave your comments, suggestions down at the bottom. I appreciate you guys. We'll see you next time. This has been the Dean for Fantasy Football Academy 2020. And follow me on Twitter at FantasyDean20. Guys, until next time, please take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And we'll see you next time on Fantasy Football Academy 2020.